السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ توحید و سنت ڈاٹ کام الحمد للہ اللہ ہدا و صلاۃ و سلام علی عباده الذین اصطفا خصوصا على سید الرسول و خاتم الانبیاء و علی آلہ و اصحابہ الذین اجتبا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون صدق الله العظيم And in our session we were talking about Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu And we talked about Umar radiyallahu anhu embracing Islam And we all know that after Umar radiyallahu anhu embraced Islam Muslims felt stronger and in fact that was the turning point in the history of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this great man for, this, for Islam and for helping Islam. Really when we see people coming into Islam people helping Islam and there are so many people being Muslims not helping Islam this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deselected some of those who initially was, were supposed to offer their services to Islam but they refused and rejected to offer their services for the sake of Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts those people on the side. And he brings some other people to do the service of Islam. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِ الْقَوْمَ غَيْرَكُمْ If you turn away, Allah will bring some other people and will replace you people with them. This is Allah. This is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with nations. He gives some people opportunity to use their abilities for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the sake of deen. But once those people refuse and reject, and they have, they have set their own priorities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings some other people. Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. We all know that he came into Islam with the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of course before making a dua and before making the selection of two people between Abu Jahl and Umar radiyallahu anhu. And praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahad al-Umarayn. Ya Allah, help Islam, strengthen Islam through one of these two Umars. Umar bin al-Khattab or Amr bin Hisham, who was Abu Jahl. He has seen the qualities of both of those people. But at that time he wanted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to decide for him what type of qualities needed in Islam. 
after Umar radiallahu anhu became a Muslim, that was the first time in the history of Islam in Mecca, in a non-Islamic state, where saying La ilaha illallah was a crime. Saying Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a crime. People who are known that they have accepted Islam and have embraced Islam, they were tortured so bad that we cannot even think of those type of tortures these days. That was running throughout that state of Makkah. It was a full state, one under the kingdom of Abu Jahl. And now this is for the first time that people are walking on the streets of Makkah Mukarramah, but they have to have Umar with, her, with them. They walk on the streets of Makkah Mukarramah, and no one can say anything to these people. Before that, people will be spitting on their faces while they're walking on the streets of Makkah. People will be throwing stones at them and they are walking on the streets of Makkah Mukarramah in their own homeland. Wake up in the morning and find a lot of trash outside of the house. And leave the home and come back home and find that the house is full of trash. But now Umar radiallahu anhu is walking on the streets of Makkah Mukarramah. And he spatially goes around on the streets of Makkah Mukarramah to see that who is there to hurt Islam and who is there to say anything against Islam. One of the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected him for. His brain. He's not trying to stay home and cover up his iman now. He says, I have done enough against Islam when I was not a Muslim. I wasn't sitting home at that time. Why should I sit home now? And he walks in the, on, on, in the streets of Medina Munawar, and in the streets of Makkah Mukarrama. And challenging people, if anyone has anything to say against Islam, come and talk to me. Forget about saying anything against Islam, no one can even give Omar a bad look. It was a big change in the history of that state. And Abu Jahl, as we talked about it before, Abu Jahl is his uncle. So they can't just go and kill Umar because there are family ties over there. They have a big problem in hurting Umar or killing Umar wal Billah. Finally, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the 13th year of Hijrah allowed the Muslims to migrate to Medina Munawwara. Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'in secretly started migrating to Medina Munawwara. Umar radiallahu anhu, he also decided to migrate because now all the Sahaba have to migrate to Medina Munawwara. But he said, I'm not going to do it secretly. He put all of his weapon on, weapons on him, went to the Kaaba and started performing the Tawaf, where performing the Tawaf openly was illegal during the daytime. He's performing the Tawaf there, and after finishing the Tawaf, all the leaders of Quraysh are sitting on those mountains that were around the Kaaba. Nowadays we don't see those mountains that were around the Kaaba in those days. And those were their meeting places. According to their status, they were getting together in those different places. Umar radiallahu anhu started going to all of those groups of Quraysh. And he's announcing it there. That I'm leaving to Medina Munawara now. I have found Islam to be the true religion. If anyone has a problem with me leaving Mecca Mukarramah and going to Medina Munawara, come and see me on the path of Medina. If you would like your wife to become a widow, your children to be orphans, come and see me on the way of Medina. 
a known date to go and talk to Omar. He took 20 people with him, and they migrated to Medina Munawwarah. Whereas the situation before that was, that if the Kuffar of Quraysh would find out any person is leaving Mecca Mukarramah, they would try to capture that person, punish the person, torture the person. This is what happened to Umm Salama radiallahu anha. A family of three people was migrating to Medina Munawwarah. Abu Salama, Umm Salama, and their child Salama. When the Kuffar of Quraysh knew that these people are, mig are migrating to Medina Munawwara, they went and they tried to stop them. So Abu Salama said to them, I'm free, I can go where I wherever I want. Okay, under one condition, you cannot take your family with you, and you cannot take any wealth with you. You earn this money while you are in Mecca, you have to leave everything back in Mecca. You can't take nothing with you. Of course, the parents and the other relatives of Umm Salama radiallahu anha were non-Muslims. So they said, we are not going to allow our daughter to go to, Mecca, uh, to leave Mecca Mukarramah. So of course they took their daughter away, Umm Salama radiallahu anha. And now, both the clans are fighting about the, about the baby, Salama. Where should Salama go? With the father or mother. And both of them are claiming the custody of the child. And it's not because they are fighting and arguing for it. It's because of their relatives. The relatives of Umm Salama radiallahu anha are saying that this is, we are not going to leave the child, let the child go without the mother. Umm Salama radiallahu anha says they started pulling my child and they started pulling him so hard they did not care about the child. Their main focus was that they want to win the battle. And they pulled the hand of the child off the body. Abu Salama radiallahu anhu, he went to Medina Munawwara. And Umm Salama remained in her family in Makkah Mukarramah. She says, I used to cry. Day and night I was crying. I wanted to go to my husband. And finally, some of my own relatives, they said to the rest of the people, that if she is Muslim, she doesn't want to stay with you people. Just let her go. Let her go to Medina, stay with her husband, and practice her religion. So finally, they let Umm Salama radiallahu anha go to Medina Munawar. So this is how they used to migrate to Medina Munawwara in those days. And here Umar radiallahu anhu comes, who is announcing it to these people. And then he goes to Medina Munawwara openly. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also migrated to Medina Munawwara after some time. Now as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started establishing an Islamic state in Medina Munawwara, that was the time when he really started looking in the abilities of the people that who are the people who can suit running this Islamic state and helping in organizing this state. And at that time he found two people who were the most suitable to help him in organizing all the work for the state. Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu. The two people that normally when we talk about them, we will think about Salah, we will think about them reciting Qur'an, we will think about them standing at night time and performing Salah of Tahajjud, we will think about these people keeping a lot of fast, we will think about these people crying before Allah and making a lot of Dua. But at the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed with these people with such an understanding wisdom, organization, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose these two people to help him in running and organizing the Islamic State. And at that time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a statement that shows his trust in these two people and shows that how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed these two people with qualities, abilities, 
to help the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all of his affairs. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma will agree to a point, even if my opinion is different, I will not disagree with those two people because of the understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them. If both of them will agree to it, I'll go with their opinion. Subhanallah. This is a great witness from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for their great understanding. Of course, we will inshallah talk about some of the great abilities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Umar radiallahu anhu with for running the Islamic State after he became a Khalifa that were even more known to us men. Inshallah we'll talk about those at that time. But here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam selecting these people is telling us that these people were with some special qualities to help Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with all of these things. Of course the greatest quality they had that supersedes everything else and that is needed the most in order to accept the rest of the qualities is the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for the deen of Islam <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showing his trust on these two people once he said Abu Bakr and Umar as-sam'u wal-basar these are my eyes and my hearing Abu Bakr and Umar radiyallahu anhum are my eyes and my hearing and if we look at the history we will always find that there were many great people in the history of Islam or in the history of the world generally speaking the history there were great people in the history of, world, of the world Many of them did not have any success because they did not have people around them who can continue their work, who can take their effort, understand their effort, and who can be really of great help to them in advancing their work. So those people with great abilities, great efforts, could not do anything because no one around them to help them in, to help them in that work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through these type of people this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith inna Allah akhtara li ashabi don't think that these people were just they just happened to be born at that time and then they were around me this is why they became Muslim and this is why they became my sahaba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he started selecting anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam he selected me out of the whole world all the human beings and then he chose my Sahaba also these people to be around me at this period of time he chose these people to be with me his trust in these people was such, was such. once a person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said Ya Rasulullah while a person was riding his cow he was riding his cow so the cow looked at the person and said Ma hada. we are not created for this purpose use us for the right purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for there weren't too many sahaba around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time and especially Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu were not there but of course when we say not too many doesn't mean that there were only two or three normally when he is in the masjid in normal situations he used to have at least 70 people around him listening to each and every word and seeing each and every action that he performs those are the people who are sitting in a sufa in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who have devoted their lives to learn Islam to get the knowledge of Islam and to be around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at all the times up to this time there is a place in the Masjid of Medina Munawwara in the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is a little higher called a Sufa that's the place where those people used to reside in the Masjid they used to sleep there, they used to stay there, they eat there, they live there all the time 
first Islamic institute we can call it. More than 70 people were there. So these people heard this man came coming to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's narrating this incident to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the cow said, talk to the person. So some of the Sahaba asked, Subhanallah, Baqarat al tatakallam can a cow talk? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Amantu bihi ana wa Abu Bakr wa Umar, me, Abu Bakr and Umar, we believe in this. And they were not there. They did not even hear about it. He trusts them so much that he knows that as soon as they will know that I believe in it, they will believe in it. No doubt about it. Therefore, although they are not there, he's saying, me, Abu Bakr and Umar, we believe in it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was assigning different responsibilities to Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa sallam in Medina Munawwara, he gave Umar radiallahu anhu a great responsibility that, that also shows a great trust of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Umar radiallahu anhu, and that was, women used to, men and women both, they used to do bay'ah, allegiance with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at different locations. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam assigned Umar radiallahu anhu to do the allegiance with these women on behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so whenever he will get a news or he will get a message that there are some women or there is a woman who would like to do bay'ah allegiance with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to send Umar radiallahu anhu to their home that go and do the bay'ah with these women on my behalf. A great trust. We're doing it on behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when scholars talked about the greatness of these great Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma, they mention one thing that really makes us think that it has to be the greatest one of, the, if not the greatest, at least one of the greatest things these people have and they got in their life. Something that proves the greatness of these two people, although there are hundreds of hadiths. Before I go to that thing, that point, I just remembered another hadith of Ali radiallahu anhu who says, <coughs> once I was sitting beside Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the masjid. And he saw Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu are coming towards the masjid and they're holding each other's hands. So um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he whispered to me, said, Ali, look at these two people coming to the masjid. These are the leaders of the people of Jannah except for Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam. These are the leaders of the people of Jannah except for Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Then he said, La tukbirhuma ya Ali. Ali, don't tell them this at this time. Don't tell them about it. The time although is running out, but it's still very quickly I must mention the reason that scholars have mentioned why not to tell these people. Although they know, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have given them the guarantee for the Jannah. So why don't tell them about, they will be the leaders of the people of Jannah. The scholars have mentioned the reason for it. That because if these people will know about it, it's not that they will feel too great about themselves. It's these people will work so hard thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just Rasul like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was spend, standing the whole night praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, feet were swollen. Aisha radiallahu anha asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, how can you stand for the whole night praying to Allah, crying to Allah, your feet are swollen, have some rest for a few days, Ya Rasulullah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, or oh, Aisha is not because of any sins. I know that Allah has forgiven all of my sins, but afala akulu abdan shakura, or oh, Aisha, shouldn't I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the status he has given me? This is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said to Ali, don't tell them, because if these people will find out to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be struggling and working as hard as I'm trying to work, and these people will be really hurting themselves. So don't tell them about it. After that, that Ali radiallahu anhu mentioned this in the khutbah. 
He said, if they were alive, I would not have mentioned this hadith, but they have died. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me not to mention it to those people. This is why I'm telling you people now after the death. So scholars, when they talk about the greatness of these two people, then read a hadith which is not directly about these two people, but once we talk about the hadith, we will realize that this hadith is one of the greatest virtue of these two people, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, every person gets buried from the place where his death was taken. A person might be born in Medina Munawwara, his dust that used in his body was taken from America, that person will be buried in America, from the place where his dust was taken. And we have seen it. A person is born in Georgia, lived in Georgia throughout his life. He comes over here, his dust was taken from that very specific point of the earth, and he gets buried over there. Every person gets buried wherever his dust was taken from. <coughs> Where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is buried, we know it now as the haram in the haram of Medina, which was his house. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is buried there, and we all know that Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhum are also buried there. They're all, all of them, their dust was taken from the same place how great that thus might be, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected that point to get the dust of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the body of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and from the same place, the selection of Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that itself shows how great of a people they have to be. And this is the reason Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always mentioned the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa that don't hurt these people. Don't hurt their feelings. <coughs> Imam al Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi have narrated in his book, which is specifically written about the subject, Manaqib Umar bin al Khattab radiallahu anhu. He has narrated that a person went for Umrah. And at that time, while he was there at Medina Munawwara at the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sending blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, As-salamu alayka ya Abu Bakr, ya Umar, ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. So a person is standing beside him. He heard him saying this, so that person invited him to his home invited the scholar to his home. After he took him to his home, he tied him up and he cut his tongue and he said, is this is the same tongue that you were admiring Abu Bakr and Umar with? So he said, he cut his tongue so next time you don't admire these people. Imam al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi wa with his own authentic chain of narrators, with a complete chain of narrators. He said, this person started crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, started praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him that he got the ability of speaking again. Next year he went for Umrah, for Hajj. And he was at the same place and there was a person looking for him. When this person found him, he said, I would like to invite you to my home. So now he remembered the same incident. He is not the same person, but is afraid that the person might do the same thing to him. But he also had seen a karama from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who gave him the ability of speaking again. So he said, never mind, I will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, if this person will do any harm to me. So he went to his home. And after he went to his home, that person fed him, and after feeding him, he said, do you know who I am? No, I don't know. He said, last year you were invited into my house. But at that time, I did not invite you to this home. My father invited you. He opened a room. 
and he showed him a pig sitting there. He said, after you finished, after you, he, he done punishing you, and you left back, the next day, we heard in our house, in our house, someone saying, that are you the people who are trying to stop the people from admiring my companions? Go, you are a pig. And he said, we went to our father's home, and he was in the situation, and he's still in the same situation. He said, I saw him with my own eyes. And there are really hundreds of incidents that scholars have quoted in the seerah, tarif, and the explanations of a hadith. But one very amazing is, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi had a neighbor. That neighbor did not like these two khulafa, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhumah. So he had two donkeys, he named one of them Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr and he named the second one, second one Umar. Just to insult the other Muslims and other people. One day Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi got the news that his own donkey kicked him and he killed him. So Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi said, I assure you that go and find out the donkey that killed him has to be the one that he named him Umar. <laughs> and they found out that it was really true. That the donkey that he named Umar was the donkey who kicked him and killed him. He said because this, this is the quality of Umar radiallahu anhu does not accept the falsehood. This is al farooq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguished the haqq and battle between the truth and falsehood between, through Umar radiallahu anhu. There are many ayahs in Quran al-Kareem that were revealed after Umar radiallahu anhu made the statement the ayah was revealed confirming the statement of Umar radiallahu anhu insha'Allah we will talk about some of those ayahs and some of the other things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to say about Umar radiallahu anhu in our next sessions may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq to follow these great Sahaba Ridwan Allah alayhim ajma'een May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to surat al-mustaqeem and make all of us amongst his accepted virtuous servants. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa lakum wa lisa'ilu al-muslimina wa al-muslimat wa akhru da'wana alayhi. Alhamdulillah.